Hi, I'm Victor Margiotta, and this is The Community Show. I want to thank you for watching. We're in for a treat tonight. We have our guest, Karen Mayo, and uh, it's a gift to have her here tonight. She's going to talk about nutrition. So I'd like to say hello to Karen. Thank you for coming on. Hello, Victor. Thank you. All right. <laughs> you know, uh, nutrition has been going on for a very long time. You know, back 2500 BC, mm. it was written in the stone tablets of Babylon that uh, when you had pain in your stomach, mm -hmm. you were to avoid onions for three days. Wow. So nutritionists have been around for a long time, and it is a science. Oh, it is a science. I know. I love it. it who doesn't like to talk about food? Well, that's <laughs> the thing. You know, it's, it's incredible. My family has made a living on, uh, on selling food and preparing food. And so food has been a big part of my life. And uh, I have a lot of interest in nutrition. Well, you know, um, food should be part of everyone's life. Uh, it's just a matter of what type of food you put into your mouth and how it nourishes your body. Because each um, culture, you know, they have different, um, you know, foods that nourish them or can act as a poison as well. So again, it's all about the, um, you know, nourishing of the body and uh, different cultures. Well, I mean, it's important for us all to sit down and have a nice meal. But, you know, throughout history, sitting down with the family mm -hmm. and enjoying a meal has always been paramount. And, uh, you know, it's, it's a practice that kind of we've been getting away from and we need to get back to. No, I love that. And um, absolutely, you know, getting back to basics and getting into the kitchen and getting the family together um, is so important and also important for the children. You know, it's important to talk about mind, body, and soul. And, uh, you know, those are the three things that, you know, we're all made of. And, uh, you know, I'd like to talk about the alimentary canal, which okay. is the, the start of our digestive tract, mm -hmm. and it starts in the mouth. Right. Right. So um, digestion obviously starts in the mouth when we put the food in, but mm -hmm. it's the um, digestive enzymes and also the chewing, so the macerating of the food in your mouth. Um, chewing 20 to 30 times is a normal um, practice to be mindful, mm -hmm. but sometimes I know that um, in different people have different, um, let's say you work outside, sometimes you're eating way too fast because you have to get back to your job. Um, I get that, and um, but if you could be more mindful and chewing your food, um, mm -hmm. your body will have such a, a better time in digesting it. Um, and that practice, uh, mindfulness, really needs to be, um, you know, practiced nowadays. Just because everyone is going 24/7, and stress and cortisol is a really bad, um, you know, um, hormone mm -hmm. that just is constantly wreaks havoc on our body. So the food goes through the esophagus into the stomach. Small intestine. Yep. St yep. Stomach. And uh, the stomach is like a little laboratory. There's all kinds of uh, uh, enzymes and mm -hmm. um, hormones, bile duct goes into there. Yep, so a lot of um, like gastin and um, there's all kinds of um, yeah hormones that get m mixed together mm -hmm. and then get mixed m with your food and then it moves uh, down to the small intestine yep. where the water and proteins um, and everything else gets kind of um, absorbed if you chew it mm -hmm. small enough right. for the small intestine to absorb it. If you have big chunks of food, it's just going to continue through the intestinal tract and you're not going to absorb um, the nutrients that inside your food. So just, um, just like um, the seeds, the mm -hmm. flax seed, like you have to macerate that really good between your teeth to get the oils out, which are the, um, the nutrients. All right, so it is very important to, to chew the food because you're breaking it down to a state where it can be absorbed into uh, the, the small intestine. Yeah, and actually um, the pulp in, in your food mm -hmm. is really, like on your fruits and your vegetables, it's so important to make sure that you do macerate it um, small enough for your body to absorb it because that's the reason why you're eating it yeah. you know why yeah. why waste it or just you know make sure that your um, body is absorbing it so make sure you're chewing 20 to 30 times okay. almost a, like an applesauce consistency 
All right, let's talk about what we're eating. Um, now, the basic is breakfast, lunch, and dinner. Yay! You know, that is a, uh, a structure that's been going on forever. Mm -hmm. Let's talk about what's important to eat for breakfast. Sure. So breakfast um, is the most important meal of the day. That's what they say. Um, and it is. And you really need to have a good um, protein and fat balance. Um, so eggs and, you know, avocado is a great breakfast. I know sometimes it's um, not, you know, people can't just grab and go. Mm -hmm. So, um, but I think it's, it's really important to eat something um, in the morning if it if it's you know something like you know fat and protein so it could be like overnight oats you could add you know your nuts and your seeds which is a great fat um, people don't realize that your nuts and seeds are fats mm -hmm. and they're healthy fats right. so you can again make those overnight oats for that as well um, for lunch uh, you want to really make sure that you have a little bit of carbohydrates complex carbohydrates there um, and some protein. You always want to make sure you have protein and a little bit of fat um, at every meal. And your fat at lunch could be like salad, olive oil salad dressing, something like that, mixed with your apple cider vinegar. Um, and then dinner um, can be the same thing. And sometimes I um, advise my clients to, if you wanted to have breakfast for dinner, yeah. you could totally do that too. Like have eggs at night with avocado. Mm -hmm. And um, it's actually better on your, on your intestinal tract. It's a lighter meal. It's a lighter meal and um, and you're, that way you're not going to bed uh, with a full belly either. So um, I like to, you can mix and match breakfast, lunch, and dinner. Right. You know, it's ironic that eating the right foods will increase the, the uh, capacity of your digestion. So eating the right foods is what creates the, uh, the ability for these you know, for these chemical reactions to go on in your stomach. Right. So our body is amazing. Like, it's perfect. Our body is really perfect. Yeah. So as long as we give it just a little time to heal, it will do exactly that. It's just amazing. Our, our bodies are, I mean, God made us so amazing. Um, and every body, every mm -hmm. single person is amazing. They just have to um, give it a chance yeah. to heal. Um, and um, yeah, I mean, it's just a matter of, even if you're just eating a little lighter, I mean, it's, summertime is just a week away. Yeah. Yeah, it's Friday. So, um, no, eating lighter, eating salads, eating cooler things. Um, watermelon is great to have, you know, in the summertime mixed with a little feta and yeah. some arugula yeah. with some, um, a little bit of apple cider vinegar or balsamic vinegar on it. Yeah, yeah. So delicious. Excellent. Yeah. Now we've gone from, I know for years, the food pyramid was the structure for what we're supposed to eat. Right. And uh, it was, it stated that 11 to 12 uh, portions of grains, Yeah, uh, and I think bread, that, yeah, I think that was cereal. the basis of all of our obesity, diabetes that we have in this country. Mm. Um, no other country eats like this. <laughs> yeah. So eating, I mean, it is obviously the, the pyramid has changed now, yeah. so which well, is... Well, now they call it the four plate, yeah. which is mm -hmm. the um, vegetables, fruits, protein, and then the grains. And then they just have a little dial on the side that says uh, dairy. Right, and my feelings on dairy is yeah. we, we are not baby cows. So yeah, we don't need dairy. Right. Um, there is plenty of non-dairy that is delicious and um, seeds and nuts, all kinds of dairy. To get the, to the get the omega threes and the omega sixes and the mm -hmm. vitamin C. Matter of fact, um, hemp seed uh, milk has all your omega sixes, omega threes. Um, it has more um, vitamin C and more vitamin D actually than milk does. So, uh, well, I'm sure we'll chat about that in a little yeah, bit. But yeah. <laughs> yeah. So amino acids are mm -hmm. uh, create a, a huge function in the body. Yes. So the amino acids, um, our body can't com um, produce c it. convert all of them that we need, but mm -hmm. um, yeah, it can produce uh, about 20 of them. Okay. So um, we need to get the other from food. And complete proteins um, what, that has all of our amino acids are things like quinoa and um, the dairy and the seeds like I was just talking about, mm -hmm. like hemp seed and um, almond. And uh, they have actually quinoa milk as well now, too. 
So protein is a big part of our diet. Oh, and yeah. it's completely mm -hmm. necessary. Mm -hmm. Oh, yeah, absolutely. You need protein for your cells to rejuvenate and also to um, help with releasing of the toxins in our cells. We need fat, protein, and carbohydrates. Okay. Now, what about um, fiber? Yes, fiber. Love fiber. Fiber's our friend. Okay. <laughs> so fiber is in our chia seeds, mm -hmm. um, and fiber is in our fruits and vegetables. And it's uh, very necessary. It's very necessary to keep our um, intestinal tract moving. Right. Yep. So. And it's not it's not always absorbed, but it, it serves a purpose as a. Uh, a bulk. Right. Yeah. So. Right, so that's why it's so important to go back to where we were talking about the maceration of the food in our in our mouths um, when we're eating. Because if we're not macerating or we're not chewing and those enzymes are not being produced, um, then we are going to have a tough time going through uh, our our um, bowel system, our um, you know the tunnel that we mm. have, the alimentary canal. Yeah. And, um, you know, I want to read a statement. Uh, lifestyle and obesity related diseases are becoming increasingly prevalent all around the world. There is little doubt that in, um, increasingly widespread application of some modern food processing technologies has contributed to the development of these food process industry is a major part of modern uh, economy and such it is a influential economic and such uh, a political decisions in any known in political uh, I'm sorry in any prone profit driven economy health considerations are hardly a priority effective production of cheap food with long shelf life is more the trend. In general, whole fresh foods have a relatively short shelf life and are less profitable to produce and to sell than more processed foods. Thus, the consumer is left with a choice between more extensive but nutritionally superior whole fresh foods and cheap, usually nutri nutritionally inferior processed foods. Because processed foods are often cheaper, more convenient in purchasing, storage, and preparation, and more available, the consumption of nutritionally inferior food has caused many nutritional-related health complications. I mean, there's a lot said in there. No, absolutely, and um, unfortunately, um, our, you know, our country is based on the standard American diet, which is sad. Uh, for short. And there's a lot of omega-6s, processed foods, um, and that has led to obesity, that has le led to diabetes, um, you know, type 2. Um, and it's actually led to a lot of other conditions, um, rheumatoid arthritis, cancer, um, arth regular arthritis, uh, that's all based on um, sugar and these, you know, even fast food. Um, high blood pressure, um, high cholesterol. Yeah. I mean, that's all related to food that doesn't have to be. It can be preventative. Um, yeah, no, I, I, I agree, and it's it's a sad state. And unfortunately, for you know many Americans, there are you know 35 percent of the United States is is obese. Mm. The the problem is that they look at us as consumers. We're not people. And mm -hmm. this is a major factor. And this is where your accountability has to set in. Mm -hmm. And what we're going to talk about is the healthy choices. Mm -hmm. Now, if you don't make healthy choices for yourself, certainly the government's not worried about you because they're more worried about making money, mm -hmm. uh, being able to tax all these items. Well, it's really interesting that people would actually lean on the government to m help them make healthier choices. Um, there are farmers that are can make healthy choices for you as well, sure. and you don't have to be accountable to them. You just have to spend your dollars with them, and that's another healthy choice. You can spend your dollars. Matter of fact, we live in America, so mm -hmm. you spend your dollars wherever you want to spend them. Yeah. And if you're spending your dollars in fast food, or if you're spending your dollars and waiting 
waiting for the government. I mean, they're going to just l lean you right into the system of medication, right into the system of, you know, um, I'm going to stop there because I yeah. don't want to no, say anything. No, we want to stick with the yeah. fact that you have to make the choice. Yes. You know, and it's important. Health starts with what you eat. Yes. And whole foods, you know, let's talk about organic foods compared to sure. non-organic. Sure. So um, some foods you don't necessarily have to purchase organically if there's, um, you know, a, a money situation or mm -hmm. finance situation. Um, like pineapples, you don't have to buy them because you're going to peel them, so you don't necessarily have to buy them organically. Okay. Same thing with avocados. You know, anything that you're going to buy um, that you can peel, you can buy that um, conventional. Now we have a pepper here. Um, though we are going to eat the outside of this pepper, uh, there is also a PLU code on here, as you can see. Now the PLU code is so important when you're shopping because you're gonna be able to tell if it's conventional or organic. Um, this is conventional, it starts with a four and it's four letters, or four numbers. Mm -hmm. The organic starts with a nine, and then there's also um, genetically modified, and that starts with the letter, um, the number eight. Okay. So with the pepper though, we're gonna be able to put it in um, a bath, which is one part white vinegar mm -hmm. to two parts water. You put it in the bath, and it's not going to um, taste like white vinegar, but you're gonna get some of the pesticides off. And then you'll be able to actually enjoy the pepper, taste it fully, and enjoy it. Um, I mean, they're delicious, even with the, the kale as well. You know, you're going to bathe it mm -hmm. in the um, white vinegar bath okay. and um, dry it off and enjoy it as well. Beautiful. Yeah. What is your uh, feeling about supplements? Supplements. Okay. So I believe we should get our um, minerals and our vitamins from our food, mm -hmm. but sometimes um, if our, if you know, if the ground doesn't have the, the minerals in the soil, then we kind of have to supplement with something. I do recommend supplementing with vitamin D. Okay. Um, again, um, because a lot of people in the Northeast, or actually in the United States, are really deficient in vitamin D. Um, vitamin B is also something that you should supplement with. Um, it's really good for your brain health. Um, and then magnesium, so that trifecta, the vitamin D, vitamin B, and mm -hmm. magnesium, that's surrounded um, your, br like your brain health uh, and your heart health. So magnesium is really important. It keeps your heart ticking um, and keeps it pumping. So it's really, really important to make sure those three that you supplement with, or even when you're getting your blood work from your doctor, mm -hmm. your uh, physician, that you make sure that your, um, your D and your B are um, balanced and in the, in the middle. Sometimes your doctor will say, hey, you're just on the, um, you know, you're just, you're just low, but why would you want to, in life, why would you want to be just low? Why not be optimal? So your optimal should be around, um, you know, 50. That should be optimal. Okay. You know, a perfect example of us not getting the vitamins we need is uh, brown rice being converted to white rice. And now you're taking away the vitamin B that's on the brown rice. And, you know, there, there was uh, an example of that. There was a disease called beriberi. Mm -hmm. and, and it was basically because they weren't getting their vitamin B. Mm -hmm. And simply because they were processing the food. Right. So. Yep. So um, brown rice is very, um, it's really delicious, number one. It's full of fiber. It also um, is great um, for when you're doing, um, a, like a, trying to get extra toxins out of your body because it acts like a little sponge and it goes through your intestinal tract mm. and it absorbs all of the toxins that are in there and then you pass it. So, I mean, brown rice is delicious yeah. and it's actually good for you where compared to white rice is full of um, simple carbohydrates and they convert into sugar. So that is a simple, um, healthy option. So brown rice and if you actually wanted to go a, a little step further you could even do black rice or red rice um, those are complete proteins actually and they are so delicious they have a nutty flavor to them so um, you know if you can get some of that into your body mm. you could do that yeah mm -hmm. so 
We got to stay away from the processed food. Yes, absolutely. Try. Try. try to. Well, try. I mean, obviously we have to live, but get back to basics and at least do your 80/20 rule, so eat well during the week or whenever your work week is, and then on the weekends you can kind of live like the way um, as long as you eat a salad, you can have some pizza. Okay. <laughs> Sounds good. All right. What are you going to make? Oh. Oh, I'm so excited. Okay. So inside of my book, Mindful right. Eating, okay. is a delicious recipe called Chocolate Heaven. All right. So we are going to put, um, so there is, oh, um, okay, a cup and a half of the um, hemp milk. Okay. We're going to put that into the mixture dish here. Yep. And to that, we are going to add a quarter cup of chia seeds. All right, I guess we're going to get up there. So a cup and a half. Okay. And um, so do you know why you use that type of um, dish for measuring? No. Okay. So when people are cooking, there are two types of dishes. One which is this like glass dish is mm -hmm. kind of round. That is for liquid, okay. where this square one is for dry. So I always see people sometimes using, you can pour that right mm -hmm. in here. I always see people using um, this type to measure water. And mm -hmm. I'm like, no, you don't measure water with that because you have to measure it with that okay. type. So we're gonna order, add a quarter cup. And chia again is um, really healthy fat. Okay, we're going to stir that up. Okay. Got to keep going. And then to that, we are going to add some chocolate, <laughs> which is my favorite extra food group. Just what I say anyway. So we're going to add a tablespoon. We're just going to improvise a little bit All right. to that. Okay. So this is um, carob powder, mm -hmm. which is so delicious. Yeah, keep stirring. Okay. And then we're gonna add more chocolate, which is cacao powder. Oh. Yeah. And then for a little sweetness, we're going to add honey because this can be a little bitter. Whoops. Okay. We're just gonna add a little bit more. And then we're gonna add a little bit of honey. Okay. And this is so easy to make. And what happens is, the chia seeds actually bulk up to almost like a tapioca consistency. Oh, they're, they're swelling. They swell, yeah. So they take on whatever you put into like water. Okay. So um, another wonderful um, recipe that you could do for the kids um, that are in sports mm -hmm. is uh, take the co coconut water and also put, them, put the chia seeds in, um, in the coconut mm -hmm. water, and that is such a great sports drink. Mm. So what I'm going to do is what you can um, is just pour it right into this mason jar. Okay. And what you're going to do is this is going to uh, again the the chia seeds are going to swell up, and this is so fun. S sort of thicken it. Yep, to thicken it, and this is so fun to do with the kids um, because you just put the lid right back on it, and then you can shake it like this. Oh. And then every couple hours, you come back and you shake it, okay. and it thickens up, and it's so delicious, and it's so healthy mm -hmm. that um, I don't know. I just I love the extra, you know, food group called chocolate. So um, easy, simple. Yeah, yeah. All right, thank you. That was great. <laughs> Let's talk a little bit about obesity. Okay. It is a one of the major health problems in the United States in the 21st century yeah. and uh, you know it's funny they say that obese people are malnourished I, that's kind of a, an oxymoron but um, yeah so it's true because it's they're true. not eating the right foods they're not eating the right foods they're eating a lot of foods um, that have omega-6s in them um, even though omega-6 is healthy for us but it has to be in proportion with omega-3s and it's also the simple sugars that are converting um, into fat that are being stored. So um, unfortunately that's what's happening in fast food and all of the foods that um, we were just talking about that lead to um, you know overweight processed you know foods. Yeah. 
Yeah. What is a good uh, caloric intake? What, what's a good number? Okay, so that actually can um, vary with everybody. Everyone's mm -hmm. different because of their metabolic, you know, um, makeup. Sure. Um, for, and again, you know, sometimes talking about calories, um, a candy bar can have the limits. same, yeah, yeah, well, it's, it limits. So um, I don't necessarily talk about or have my clients or have anyone I talk to um, really count calories because it's the same thing if you have broccoli, it's the same thing if you have a candy bar. Mm. So you have to really um, be mindful of um, what you're exactly putting into your mouth. You're yeah, exactly. I mean, but to give you a number, um, I would say um, 1,500 calories. Mm -hmm. I know there are a lot of um, um, programs that do count calories, and I get that. Um, but 1,500 for, yeah. for men, and uh, for women, I would say 1,200. But it's all it's also important to uh, to eat the right foods though yeah you, you have know? to you have to really re eat the right foods like um, seaweed seaweed is really good for our thyroids uh, it's also good for our immune system um, it's really it's really great for um, you know iron as well iron deficiency um, so this green so this it's called chlorella mm -hmm. um, chlorella and uh, blue green algae and um, liquid chlorophyll. This is all really good stuff for our for our guts, mm. you know, for our um, intestinal tract. It acts like a little Pac-Man, and it goes in and it um, it eats away what's been sitting in people's crevices in their intestinal tract, and it helps you pass it. So it's really great um, supplement if you um, can look for it. It's a blue green, like I said, blue green algae is okay. wonderful. And then we have our probiotics. So probiotics, they um, are really good for our gut as well. They help to flourish um, our good bacteria in our body. And so our bad bacteria isn't taking over our intestinal tract as well. Yeah, yeah. So probiotics are very, very important. And um, our blue-green algae um, okay, as well. It's good for balance in the it's, stomach. Yes, it does. Yep, balances. Okay, we've got about a minute and a half left. Okay. Let's talk about the book sure. real quick. Sure. Um, this is Mindful Eating, and then um, across the way we have Roots of Leadership. Roots of Leadership um, has a podcast as well. I co-authored it with the CEO of Marsha McLennan Agencies. Um, it's a really wonderful book as far as um, journaling. Mm. Journaling is uh, really super important. Um, Mindful Eating is um, as a 30-day journal as well, and it has plenty of recipes in it. Okay. And, um, I know we've talked about this before, but uh, you talk about pH balance in your in your book. Yes, yeah. So the pH balance, the acid alkaline balance in food, um, really you want to have an 80-20 rule, um, where you're having 80% of really nutritious food on your plate, mm -hmm. um, compared to uh, like say your acid. So your protein could be animal protein. If let's just say it could be animal protein. Um, so the 80-20 rule can also um, be applied to where you're eating again um, really well during the week and then on the weekends you have your 20% where mm -hmm. you're you're living yeah. but as long as you're eating a salad with your pizza um, I always tell people that I mean go ahead and enjoy your pizza okay. yeah all right so I'm Victor Margiotta this is the community show there's a lot of options out there we want you to eat right exercise get healthy take care of yourself because uh, if you don't do it, nobody else will. It's so important for you to take care of yourself. So thanks for watching.